Hello, everyone. This is Steve Bennett from Special Olympics Maryland, Senior Director of Competition and Coach Development. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to be with us tonight for the uh, Summer Games HOD pre-games webinar. Um, again, myself, uh, I will be covering some of the content along with Mike Sarnowski, Vice President of Sports, um, Jane Dunn on housing, and George, our CFO, will talk on some transportation um, content as well. Um, as a reminder, if you have any questions, um, in the control panel you can uh, hit the raise your hand button, or in the text box you can actually type in your question. We have Zach Centron here, one of our sports directors, who will be uh, monitoring those questions. And again, this, will, this is being recorded. Uh, we will send out the slides to everyone as well as post them on our coaches resource page, which we will touch base on in just one second. So here's just some things we're gonna go over tonight. Um, again, welcome everyone, so that's out of the way. Uh, we'll go over some venue maps, um, some registration processes, uh, the schedule, uh, some transportation, block party, miscellaneous updates, things of that nature. Um, and then we'll also mention, obviously, the HOD meeting coming up on June 6th that uh, we'll have some handouts for you there and go over any last minute um, topics at that time. At the end, we'll also have some question and answers. If you uh, have a question throughout the event like, or out the, throughout the webinar, um, like I said, just te text them in um, or we'll open it up at the end and see how the questions go. So this is just kind of a, a snapshot of, if you're not familiar with it, um, hopefully you are, but if not, on the overall Special Olympics Maryland website, if you go to the Coaches tab and scroll down to the Dropbox where it says Coaches Resources, there's all kinds of great information that we've been able to uh, upload to the website, it's very user-friendly, even from your phones. So there's a Summer Games site, that's what you see on the left-hand side, so it talks about um, the event guide's been posted there, <clears throat> bus schedules, uh, directions, uh, emergency procedures and sections. Uh, and then we also have the individual sports sections as well. So bocce, swimming, uh, softball, cheerleading all have um, their own section there with uh, sports-specific information. That's what you kind of see on the right-hand side of the page. Um, as an example, you see athletics and it's got the, the athletics section of the event guide um, and other things there. So at the bottom there, that's the actual links to, to that resource page um, so that you're, uh, you know where to access that. But uh, we've had a lot of great uh, feedback from people out in the field. So just wanna make sure everyone's aware of that and you can direct people there. A lot of the questions that you may have, you might find the answers to there very quickly. So he, here we have our overall, um, uh, uh, facility map of, of Towson campus, excuse me. Um, one of the things I do want to point out here, um, Bocce, if you're not familiar, haven't heard yet, Bocce has been moved from the soccer fields over near the football stadium uh, to right here by Burdick Hall. And these are the Burdick fields. So this is the University Union garage. Uh, this is Burdick Hall. <clears throat> and these are the Burdick fields where Bocce will be um, hosting competition. Um, the other things I want to point out is this is the West Village. This is where most of you or some of you will be staying in Barton, Douglas, and Towson Run Apartments. The other housing location is new to us this year. That's the residence hall um, up behind the uh, Towson Town Boulevard garage. It's a big, tall, red building, um, been renovated, so I know a lot of you are staying there as well. Uh, we also have uh, the parking. So again, for those of you going to swimming, Towson Town Garage is most likely your best bet to park there. For Bocce, the University Union Garage is your best bet. Others going over to athletics, uh, lots 13 and 14 are right here on the other side of the stadium. Shuttles will catch you there, bring you down the loop, drop you off here, or it's a very short walk around either side of, of those lots. Um, for softball and cheerleading, uh, for, I should say softball on-site, lot 21 will be the designated parking. That's also the designated parking for cheerleading. Say that because lot 20 will be blocked off throughout the weekend. Uh, that will be for bus drop-offs and pick up, pickups, um, as well as our block party in Olympic Park. 
Um, we will have a new location for um, family uh, reception, which will be over in the University Union. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But the, again, this is the basic layout of Campus Map. This is just an overview of uh, Google Earth that shows you uh, Towson University area, and then obviously our offsite Cockeysville Middle School now being called Aerotech Park. So we want to uh, thank our sponsors and partners with Aerotech, really dressing that uh, location up. A lot of good stuff going on there from a festive atmosphere and look elements. Uh, again, that's where most of the softball competition will be held, as well as all individual skills competitions for softball. Um, at this time, George, I will uh, hand it over to you to talk um, some specifics in regards to transportation. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, I think, the, do you have the bus schedule, Steve, that you can display? Um, let me see if I can pull that up. I don't right now. If you want to go ahead and talk, we can pull that up, but it is on the coach's resource page um, as well as I'm um, in the event guide as well. Okay. Um, so there's um, a number of, of points there that I'm, I'm not going to read through the whole thing. One thing I want to emphasize, um, Steve just mentioned the housing, where everyone's staying. Um, this is, I think, the first time I can remember that we don't have anybody in the towers, in the four towers. The new building that Steve mentioned is unfortunately called Residence Tower. So there might be a little confusion there on some people's part. Residence Tower, as Steve pointed out, is um, right at the end of the Towson Town parking garage. So that's only about a quarter of a mile from the University Union where we will be eating. So there will be no bus. I'm starting off the, the uh, segment on transportation talking about what won't be covered. But there will be no bus from Residence Tower to the University Union. Uh, by the time it's a quarter of a mile, by the time we loaded everybody on a bus, took them down a couple blocks, and then unloaded them, uh, clearly it's it's a walkable situation. Um, there's a lot of construction in the area, so we will mark the path as clearly as we can with signs um, so that you can get there. If anybody has any um, issues of anybody who uses walkers or chairs or anything, please email us and let us know that and we'll see what we can do. Uh, but that is the only thing where we will not have a bus. Um, so the other loop, the other routes for the buses are very similar to uh, last year. Um, from the Burdick side for Bocce, and for the meals, um, the bus stop is at the end of the University Union parking garage. This is the, what they refer to as the bus loop. And that is uh, where it was last year and, and I think the year before. That's where people will leave for Cockeysville um, from that uh, location. And that is also on the campus loop. Um, for the West Village, again, same location. It's at the end of the pavement um, towards the West Village parking garage down on the Towson Run end, the Towson Run Apartments end of West Village. Um, so there are, there are three uh, different buildings being used there. Uh, as far as access to meals, if you're in one of the, the closest building to the to the uh, University Union, it might be quicker to walk to meals than to walk to the bus stop. But there will be buses running to take you from West Village over to meals in the morning. Um, the, the rest of the routes are um, focused around the stadium side of uh, the campus. 
there will be um, a bus running. So watch the signs as you get on the bus. Look, look in the window for the signs because over there, we will have one bus just running that route, that loop, um, Auburn Drive. So it'll be running uh, to lots 13, 14, down to lot 19, uh, which is, or just past lot 19 will be the stop for athletics. It'll then go up to lot 20, which is um, softball. And then on Saturday only, there's young athletes. So it'll go into lot 21 on Saturday only. Um, so there's one route that just runs around the stadium. The other routes run the entire campus, which includes Residence Tower and West Village and the bus loop and all of those places that I just mentioned um, running around the stadium. For, um, for opening ceremony on Friday night, the buses will take everyone up into lot 20. So they'll run right up into lot 20. They're on the, they are, they will be using the space immediately at the top of the hill for lot 20. All the other activity will be in the back part of the lot away from the buses. So we're keeping everyone separated from the buses. Um, we will load again from the same area when we're uh, going back to the dorms. And remember that this is a um, on-campus route. When it's, when it's an on-campus route, you can stand. So at the end of opening ceremony, we will call you out a group at a time and let's get as many people on the buses as we can. That way we get everybody back to their dorm as quickly as, they can, as we can. So listen for the announcement, bring your group out when it's announced and we'll get you loaded on the buses as quickly as we can. And then for Saturday night for the um, dance, um again they'll be running up into lot 20 and they'll just be running all weekend or all evening i'm sorry they will be running all evening um so you can go back to your dorm at any point uh, that you choose uh, we will not stop the buses until everybody is off of lot 20 and, and and back at their their dorms and um, the times are on the schedule, but of course, if there's any problem with weather or if anything, if for any reason competition is delayed or the schedule changes, we will of course alter the, the um, transportation disc bus schedule from what is printed um, on the schedule. So there will, be, there will always be bus uh, coverage um, for the whole weekend. I think I've yeah. hit pretty much all the main topics, Steve. Yeah, and I just want to touch on something here. I, there is an error on this slide, and I apologize. I'll update it before we send it out. But those of you who are able to see the slides, um, we talk about uh, going from the housing facilities to Lot 21 for dinner on Saturday. Um, dinner will actually be in the University Union on Saturday. Uh, so I just want to make that note. Again, we'll update these slides and we'll hit on that topic several times throughout the webinar. Uh, so I just wanna make a note of that. <clears throat> yeah, um, Steve, thanks for bringing that up. Um, just as a reminder to everybody, uh, we are eating in the University Union. So the closest bus stop is at the end of the garage. So both Friday and Saturday evening after you eat, you can just walk down towards the end of the garage, pick up the buses, and head on over to um, lot 20. <clears throat> you know, one of the things I do want to note for the heads of delegation and any um, one or two people you may have coming in to um, help uh, with uh, the shirts and everything that you'll be picking up on Thursday and then going into the HOD uh, meeting on Thursday evening is there are no codes or um, meters anything needed on thursday through sunday in these locations so it's basically all over campus uh, where you would be parking or, or taking a view of facilities so the union the union garage the thousand town garage lots 13 14 which are the ones up by the stadium lot 19 which is back down at the lower loop where bocce used to uh, have parking available and then lot 21 which is the Towson Center parking lot. Um, again, I mentioned no parking will be in lot 20. 
And the one place you will need a code, which will be only for Thursday and Friday, is those of you staying in the West Village uh, area. So that's Barton, Douglas, and Towson Town Apartments. If you park in the West Village garage or in that area, you will need a parking code or a parking uh, pass. Those can be picked up on the parking meter areas. Uh, we will provide you um, in an email. We ask you to keep that code confidential and keep it just amongst yourselves um, as HODs. Um, but you'll need one as soon as you get there and wherever you're parking on Thursday. Put it on your dashboard. And then you must get a new pass uh, from the same meter or whatever and put it on your dashboard for Friday, no later than 9 a.m. After 9 a.m., they're gonna start making the rounds and they will hand out tickets. So um, nobody wants to pay a ticket. They can be $75 and there is an appeal process you can go through, but usually that just um, concludes with the reduction in the in the price of the ticket. So don't, don't get a ticket, pay attention to that. And because we will not be, um, at Special Olympics Maryland, we're not responsible for any of the parking tickets. So I just want to make sure that that's clear to everyone. Um, the other thing where there will be absolutely no parking is there's a small loading dock. Lot 19 where Bocce used to park. Uh, that is designated only for a few uh, management people and for Towson University staff. It's basically a loading dock. There's some dumpsters there, that kind of thing at the stadium. So if anyone parks in there and thinks, oh, no one will no one will notice, I'll just slip in here real quick. If we're not familiar with the car or know who's driving it, uh, we will tow uh, without warning. So nobody wants to be in that situation. So just want to make sure everyone's uh, aware of that. Steve, um, one other note there with uh, with this um, with parking and such. Um, as was noted, lot 19 is going to be uh, essentially wide open uh, because we don't have bocce. Um, some folks may or may not know this. There is a stairway. Now, it, it does involve stairs, uh, but if you walk through that little lot that he was just describing where you cannot park, again, you cannot park there, but uh, you can walk from 19 across that lot and up the stairs, and that'll take you to the floor of the stadium right behind the track staging tent. Um, so if you do opt to park in lot 19, uh, there's a relatively convenient way uh, to get to the track. Uh, that that gate may not be unlocked and open until 7.30 or 8 o'clock, uh, but it is an available uh, means to get there. I know for years I've been going in and out that way myself <coughs> uh, because of uh, easy access to other stuff. So um, just want to make sure you guys know that that's an option since 19 uh, is wide open for your use. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Mike. Absolutely. Um, the the one thing I'll also point out about Lot 19 is I don't think we'll have that problem this year, um, as it was a very desirable parking spot for those uh, viewing and, and spectating for bocce. We did have several issues in the past um, where they uh, uh, people would block other people in and park there, um, and we all we basically almost had to tow people out of that lot. So again. Just be mindful, nothing crazy, just park in a designated park parking spot. Right, uh, and actually with that, uh, because we have had to tow from here, the uh, the drive that goes up alongside CQ Arena to lot 20, there is no legal parking along that road. Um, uh, people um, tend to uh, park their cars there. Now, my guess is with Bocce not being down there, that probably won't be quite as attractive but there is no parking at all on the road going up to lot 20, the parking lot where the block party and um, Olympic Park will be held uh, behind CQ Arena. So um, just be forewarned, you'll be towed without without notice and completely at your expense, so. Thanks, Mike. Again, we had one question about what time do you need the parking passes on your car on Thursday and Friday as soon as you get into that lot. I mean, you need to put that on your car and have it on for all day. Um, again, we will send out uh, the, the code and some instructions for you guys to make it very easy for you. Um, so again, yeah, all day on Thursday and then sun, or, um, Friday as well. Okay, and, and if folks are wondering why, well, why don't we just put the code here? The, the reason is, um, since this is gonna get posted on that coach resource page, which is a great uh, help to folks, that's wide open to the public. 
So um, we don't necessarily want that uh, broadcast all over. There's a couple other things here where it might seem to make sense for us to put the information right here in the slides. But because we're, we want to be as open and transparent and share the information as widely as we can, that's information that's really just for HODs uh, and your key players there. But I'll roll right into, unless there's any other questions on transportation, I'll roll right into registration. Well, I think the floor is all yours, Mike. Great. Okay. Um, so uh, much on this slide uh, should be redundant. Uh, you should be uh, very familiar because all these registration deadlines are passed. Um, so uh, the one thing, just as a reminder, any athletes or partners who did not have a competitive event entered by you, they have been deleted. Um, there's uh, uh, there's no athletes or partners who attend without a uh, um, uh, without being entered in an event. Um, unless there's some very special situation, um, but they need to be entered in an event or, or they're, they've been removed. Uh, and then, of course, on-site registration is uh, Thursday, June 6th. Um, one note with that, um, the, to get into the building where, uh, the, into the university union, you need to enter um, from the, uh, the, the, the entrance that's facing uh, Burdick Field. Uh, and the parking garage. A lot of folks have been used to going up on the patio that's been on the back that kind of puts you in on the second level. That is completely blocked off because of uh, construction. Uh, in fact, those that whole panel of doors that went out onto that patio are completely blocked. So um, uh, don't even try thinking you can uh, you know drive your uh, your golf cart around there. You can't get in that way. Um, uh, and then of course also the shirts for open ceremonies will be available there on the uh, June sixth. You want to go to the next slide, Steve? Thank you. Uh, just a reminder on the fees um, and such that uh, for overnight, the standard fee is 65. Uh, that partially covers our incremental costs, uh, which are mostly um, uh, lodging and meals uh, for our overnight folks. Uh, the estimated cost to us is 128. So um, it's, it's only partially covering that. Um, we don't charge anything for day ofs. Uh, although it costs us just for lunches about $16 per person. Um, of course, if you do go over to the three to one ratio, I'm not gonna go into the detail on this, you've heard it enough, uh, you will be charged that full overnight or that full cost, either the 128 uh, for housing, although there really shouldn't be anybody in that situation uh, because of housing um, space. Uh, but I guess it's possible something will slip through. Uh, uh, or the $16. Uh, we'll be sending out uh, tomorrow morning uh, listings of who's still registered uh, because there are there do seem to be a lot of folks that are still registered as volunteers um, who probably should have been scratched. Uh, and we're going to give you that opportunity to um, to do that. Actually, if you go to the next slide, it, it gives you the a little deadline on that. So um, we do, as has been previously announced, um, we do need to have any of those scratches by noon on Monday, June 3rd. Uh, after that, and they need to be sent in writing to me, after that, uh, you'll be charged for any overages. And actually, you'll be charged also for anybody who's listed for housing. Um, so uh, be sure to get that in. But we'll send you a, uh, um, uh, a roster of who's in. And um, uh, if it looks like you're over that percentage, uh, what, the, um, uh, what the cost might be for that. Uh, so anyway, um, and of course that, that's not gonna, and I wish I could say I can factor in all, who's housed, who's not, so on. Um, uh, at, at this stage, since we're still getting housing information keyed into GMS, uh, thank you, Jane, for all your hard work on that. Um, uh, it is not realistic to give you, um, you know, those full breakdowns, so we can at least give you the, um, uh, you know, if you're, you know, 10, at, 10 um, supervisory people over top, over the what your ratio would give you or whatever the case may be. So you have a little bit of time to decide if you want to scratch. You don't have to scratch those people. You can leave, you can have them in there, uh, and you'll just your area will just get charged uh, for that um, additional cost. Uh, since again, we're we're subsidizing uh, folks at a three to one, and if you're going above that, that's fine. Um, but you're going to pay the full freight for the the full incremental freight for that. Um, also, um, I don't think we said this before, but I'm just going to uh, put it out there. Any scratches after that June 3rd deadline, just hold on to them. 
um, folks send them in and, and quite honestly, we're not going to do anything with them until that on-site registration. Everything's going to be printed uh, right after that June 3rd deadline and you sending them in to me or to whomever, it's just something that we've got to keep track of um, at, throughout the week uh, when we've got a lot of other stuff uh, going on. So just hold on to them and turn them all in. Anything after June 3rd, turn them all in at the on-site registration. Uh, couple reminders and again this isn't new they're just here uh, for reminding I'm not going to read this to you uh, but last year we implemented uh, exit criteria or what we're calling exit criteria for uh, track and field in the events of softball throw and 50 meter run uh, that should that says softball that's softball throw um, those are those two events as well as some others are uh, what we call fundamental events and they're explicitly intended for those athletes of lower ability, yet we still seem to have athletes who should be in uh, more traditional events like the 100 or the mini jab or um, uh, events that more appropriately challenge their capabilities. Uh, we still seem to have some athletes that are entered in that. That said, your track coaches have done a great job uh, in moving athletes out of these, uh, these lower level events uh, or the athletes who shouldn't be in those lower level events, moving them out of them. Uh, but anyhow, last year we instituted this exit criteria. Uh, Ron um, has gone through and uh, removed anybody who was entered with a score. Um, and actually, you want to go to the next slide. It has the actual cutoffs there. <coughs> um, any softball thrower, anybody who's entered in the softball throw with a distance of more than 20 meters has been removed from that event. And um, it's my understanding, at least, that the coach has been advised of that. Uh, any 50 meter, uh, anybody who's entered in the 50 meter race who was running faster than 10 seconds um, or 10 seconds or less has been removed from that. Uh, what kicks in now is if uh, on site, because someone could have put in an erroneous score, but if on site they, um, they perform, uh, somebody throws the softball more than 20 meters, they're disqualified. Um, they shouldn't be in that event. Um, and if they run the 50 meter faster than 10 seconds, they're going to be disqualified. Um, it's uh, it sounds harsh, I understand that, but they never should have been put in that event at all. Um, so uh, there's plenty of other events that are much much more appropriate. Really appreciate all the work that your um, your coaches have done. Then one other reminder: um, we followed up with coaches on this. Um, I think there was two more follow-ups today. Uh, with the swimming events being added to Friday, an athlete prior to this, an athlete could be in cheerleading and a sport on Saturday and Sunday. So they could be in cheerleading and track, cheerleading and swimming, so on. That's still essentially the same, uh, but uh, for swimming, they can only be in swimming events that are offered on Saturday or, or Sunday. They cannot be entered in cheerleading and one of the swimming events that's offered on Friday. Um, it's just too much uh, to, um, uh, to go through, e even if it appears on paper that they can rush over and catch their event. Um, no, it's just not, they're, they're not permitted to do that. Uh, we've been upfront about that since we first started uh, rolling out things related to um, uh, changes in swimming. So just want to make sure that everybody uh, is uh, aware of that. Again, it, it's all taken care of at this point, but in case you hear questions on it, it's a standard thing that we're doing there. I would also say folks should get prepared. I don't want to start a rumor control here, but at some point in the future, uh, it may be two years, not going to be next year, I don't think, but it may be two years down the line, three years down the line. It's highly likely that cheerleading is going to move to Saturday and Sunday or Sunday um, uh, because of, of growth, in which case the cheerleaders will have to make a selection uh, or, or athletes will have to make a choice there. We're not there yet but it's ultimately going to get to that point. And that's a good thing. It's a really good thing because the popularity of the sports increased and such. Um, but, uh, but knowing that's coming, um, maybe that can, uh, can ease some of the concerns folks have. We're trying to be as fair as we can across the board. So that said, uh, unless there's any questions specific to the stuff I covered, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Thank you, Mike. I know uh, Zach's a busy type in a way, so there have been some questions coming in. Um, again, we wanted to give you a, a little bit more visuals for Bocce being a new location this year. So as, as we 
stated earlier, here's the baseball field. This is not the softball field on campus. This is the baseball field. This is Burdick Hall, where a swimming competition will be conducted. This is the turf field where bocce competition will be held. Um, so you see right here in the, uh, this is the bocce parking area, the University Union garage, because if you walk right out of the garage and you go right into this area, which we'll show you a picture in just a second, this is where Delegation 10th City will be, if you will. It's right inside the fence line, um, but only on the grass area. Nothing, nothing, nothing can be on the turf, okay? And once you walk into that fence line, no beverages, food, whatever, other than water are permitted inside the fence line. So you need to keep any of your coolers or lunches or whatever for families, et cetera, outside of that fence line and eat out that area. And I'll show you a couple other areas as well. But nothing inside any of the fence lines, even in the grass area, other than water. Um, this number two area, this is uh, the Union uh, University Union, where the meals will be uh, taking place, and obviously where our head of delegation meeting will be. So right on the lower level of that, um, looking onto the bocce courts from behind a fence, there's a big overhang and shaded area that Towson themselves use that for dining areas and stuff when they have cookouts and everything. So that's a really nice um, area where you could have your lunch, uh, get in the shade, that kind of stuff. So again, you, here's the courts. You walk out here. Boom, come down this little path. This is where there's a nice picnic area where we will have food distribution for lunches and the awards area. Okay. Uh, the other thing I do want to point out is for family members, whoever, who may park up in the Towson Town Boulevard garage, you come out here, we will have family hospitality that will serve us both swimming and bocce in the Tiger Plaza. It's a big grass area where there's a, a tiger statue. Uh, very conveniently located between swimming and bocce to have family hospitality there. So just want to give you a lay of the land on that. This is how the courts will be set up. We'll have um, four group or five groups of four courts. We will have some bleachers that will be on the burdock side um, of the courts or of the of the field. You must stay in that area as far as spectators go. Uh, there's kind of like the out of bounds line on the football field and no one can cross that line. Uh, this is where uh, spectators can view the courts. And again, you can have water as a spectator, but nothing else inside the fence line other than water. The control center and medical uh, tent will be at midfield. And again, it'll be a really nice setup. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing how that's all works out this year. Hopefully everyone will enjoy it. So when I was talking about Tent City for the delegations, this is the grass area. So here's the union garage. Um, here's the grass area that you can set your tents up and everything. Once you cross over this little patch of cement here, that's the turf. Nobody goes on that with anything. But you can set your coolers up right outside along this fence line, outside of the fence line. And inside here, you can have your tents and chairs and uh, your little setup and have water. But please don't, don't bring anything other than water. Don't try to sneak it in. Uh, please relay that to your families. Um, Towson will be monitoring that. And uh, if they catch anybody doing something like that, they will ask you to leave the facility. So everyone wants to have a good time. So I just want to stress that. So here's um, on the other side of this fence. Uh, if you jump over this fence, this is where the courts will be set up. They'll set up along this side. Uh, if you walk down this little sidewalk area and they'll come out this way. So out here will be our tent, and then all the courts will be coming this way, and then the bleachers will be up against that fence line right along Burdick, Burdick Hall. So hopefully that gives you a visual of the tent city area. This is where the awards will take place for Bocce. So right down this uh, sidewalk, again, to the left is University Union Garage, right down this sidewalk, and you take a quick left, that's where all the courts are. So you come off the courts, come down this little pathway, in this area, there'll be a tent. That's where you'll pick up your lunches and food distribution. Uh, you can hang out in this area and eat. You can walk down here, go out under that overhang in the shade, have lunch. Uh, you can walk into the University Union on the lower level, have some lunch. You can go back to your tent city, whatever. And then here is, uh, so this is the tent area for food and lunch distribution. 
This will be where the awards will take place. So we'll have pipe and drape up against the back lot wall there. Stage everybody here and have them parade in, get their awards, and then exit out. And nice setup. So we have everything pretty centralized uh, for everyone's uh, uh, use. So just wanted to go over a few of those things. Um, just want to jump right into the master schedule. So again, everyone should be aware we have our um, delegation registration, um, as we always do in the University Union on Thursday the 6th from 2 to 6 in the second floor lobby, the same place it has been in years past. Um, as Mike said, uh, the same area is available, but as far as picking up your shirts, you really need to think about how you're going to um, get those shirts and, and get them back to your dorms or your cars or whatever, um, because that easy access uh, that had been in the place is no longer available as far as walking out the main door there from the um, registration. Then we'll go into our HOD meeting. New location for that this year, so it'll still be in the University Union. And when you're on the second floor there, um, it's just up one, one additional floor. So that's on the third floor of the University Union in the Chesapeake room. Uh, once you get out there, you'll see that uh, they've done a lot of switching up in preparation for their expansion of the University Union, a lot of construction going on. So we're somewhat limited to the space available to us. Then we'll get into Friday, cheerleading competition. Uh, once again, cheerleading official delegates only are the ones who get lunch on Friday. Everyone else is on their own. We'll be some family hospitality located out at the cheerleading venue. Uh, then we'll head back to dinner um, in Susquehanna, uh, University Union and Dining Hall. Uh, there will be um, the dance demonstration. I apologize, is not there this year. We have a dance demonstration out in the block party. and um, leading up to opening ceremony. So the block party and Olympic Park are both in lot 20, as I mentioned earlier. The merchandise, a lot of fun activities, that kind of stuff. Uh, then we have our coaches meetings. You can refer to uh, the specific uh, webinars for this, the, those sports or in the event guide for the locations of those, but all the coaches have been made aware of those locations. Um, then after dinner, we'll head back up there um, prepare for the opening ceremony. Again, Mike will hit on a lot of these points in a second, but this reminder, um, the staging of, and the parade of the athletes is just that uh, small group that each uh, county and area program have selected to represent their fellow teammates. We'll have the opening ceremony, and then as George stated, we'll get on the buses, head back, and get ready for the competition, the other competitions on Saturday and Sunday. Speaking of which, now we're at Saturday, so dining hall. Um, as I mentioned, there's some limited space in the University Union. One of those um, spaces that has been condensed for, for our use is the dining areas. So it's, it's a much smaller footprint. And we really would ask people to abide as much as possible to the shifts for breakfast and dinner. So I've listed those, uh, the sports that we'd like to eat at those designated times. Um, with that being said, we know something may come up, but the most important thing is get in, get your food and, and, and vacate, clean up after yourselves so that we have room for others to come in. It's going to be a little bit of a crowd, um, but we're doing everything we can, uh, and we would out like your assistance in providing the best experience at the meals uh, to get everybody in and get everybody out. Um, we've got the competitions listed there, family hospitality areas. Uh, the Young Athletes Program is great. On uh, Saturday, it'll be at the Towson Center. Um, for those of you who may not uh, have seen a Young Athletes Program session, um, just know that that's uh, for kids between the ages of two to six uh, with or without disabilities. It's just to come, have some fun, kick some balls, crawl through tunnels, jump around. Um, just really cool to see little kids interacting with each other and, and starting that inclusion movement and that uh, friendship development and all that kind of stuff at an early age. So. Uh, they get a little certificate if they come and participate. So it's really great to see that interaction for the young kids. Um, Olympic Park will be open. And uh, again, that's in Lot 20. Uh, the new thing here that I just want to stress and stress and stress is dinner on Saturday, like I mentioned earlier, is at the University Union, Susquehanna Dining. Again, there's the shifts of the sports we would like to have eating at that time or those designated times. We'll have our HOD meeting, uh, as we have in the past in United Stadium, Saturday evening. And then we will have a home run derby and a 180 uh, softball game. If you're not familiar with what that means, it's uh, similar to what we've done in the past with track and field. 
is we have law enforcement officers this year uh, playing against the coaches of the softball teams, and the athletes will be serving in the capacity of coaches and umpires. So it's going to be a really cool, cool show, and I know the law enforcement officers and coaches are really looking forward to that and seeing the athletes in that uh, in that uh, stance and that position is going to be cool to see as well. So um, the the 180 means basically you're switching up about 180 degrees and and switching the roles of the individuals in a given sport. Then we'll go to the Olympic Park and dance, um, and that'll be in lot 20, as I mentioned. The theme of that is kings and queens. Um, I do want to clarify what that means. If you think of Game of Thrones or medieval times, uh, we've had people ask, now, is that referring to prom night or the King King of Queens TV show? Um, no, this is kind of the takeoff on Game of Thrones, popular HBO show. Um, so, yeah, it's medieval times. So people can come in whatever costume they want. If they want to come as a prom king, that's fine. It may not just fit in with the other costumes, but whatever. Uh, like I said, there's a family reception that evening. And Sunday, same thing, breakfast shifts. Get on the buses, go to competition, and um, uh, then I do want to mention again, we have new family hospitality areas. Um, we talked about the one at Swimming and Bocce. Uh, there's one that has been in a couple years ago at Athletics. That'll be in the Overlook um, on the second floor there of the stadium concourse area, and then we'll also have one off-site softball, as well as the one I mentioned at Cheerleading on Friday. So again, we talked about the dinners um, and the activities on Friday. There will be some um, food vendors that will have food for sale at the block party in Olympic Park. Um, and then Mike will hit on the staging information in a minute. Um, just so everyone's aware, if in, in the case of inclement weather on uh, the night leading up to opening ceremony, we will do our best to move everything into the Towson Center, and that will be the location for activities and everyone hanging out before they uh, make their way into the stadium or into the arena. So, Mike, at this time, I'll turn it over to you to get into some specifics regarding the opening ceremony. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, <clears throat> hopefully everybody is aware um, that this is no surprise that we've made some significant changes to the opening ceremony um, that uh, we're, we're going to try out. The biggest change, of course, is that not everyone is involved with the parade. They were going with a representative parade. And thank you to those area leaders who were involved with the, um, the feedback session with 90% saying, yeah, go ahead and do it uh, because the parade, the length of the parade has been such a pain point. So um, we'll have some adjustments to this. That thing in red there is, is critical. We're gonna be, we're, we're tweaking stuff uh, as we get more information from you and as we get through and uh, uh, get their plans in a little bit better shape. Um, parade staging is going to be starting at 6.30, uh, and the staging will be for your 10, uh, maximum of 10 people in your delegation, um, will need to be, uh, will be inside the CQ arena. So they'll need to come into the arena. Uh, we'll have signs directing you there, or directing you in once you get in the doorway. It's basically, as you come in, you're going to veer off a little bit to the right, um, uh, right inside the door. Um, and there'll be a check-in point there and we'll have uh, some seats and space for everybody to sit down with that. Only have the delegation members who are going to be in the parade go back there. We will have a list and we will be checking it off. Uh, it is most helpful if you come back there as a group. So rather than having individuals straggle in, it would be most helpful, not essential, but most helpful um, to come back as a group uh, and check in. Um, there is a maximum of eight athletes and two non-athletes. I had previously said, I think, partners or coaches. It's essentially two non-athletes. Um, so, yes, even an HOD could do that if they wanted to, uh, but it's only two. There are no exceptions to these maximums, um, period. Uh, so thank you to those. I think we only got one inquiry about making any change. So thank you to everybody for uh, um, uh, abiding by that. So in order to be included in the parade, there's two key things that need to happen. Number one is you need to provide the names of that maximum of eight athletes and two non-athletes by Monday night, June 3rd. Uh, via a survey, we sent the survey link out back on May 22nd. That's one of those things we didn't put it here in the slide deck, going back to what I said earlier um, in the evening. 
because this is going, uh, this will be posted to anybody in the world can see it and don't want family members going in and submitting uh, your list of athletes or, or whomever that are gonna be in there. So, uh, but we'll include that email or that link uh, when we re-email or email the slides uh, and recording. Thank you, by the way, to uh, the five areas who have already submitted their lists, Anne Arundel, Baltimore City, Carroll, Prince George's and St. Mary's, thank you much. Uh, I should also point out that uh, while three of them did submit, uh, eight athletes and two non-athletes, the other two um, submitted uh, only six athletes or five athletes, and that is fine. Um, the, uh, it's a maximum of eight, you don't have to have eight. Um, so that's completely fine. The other thing that's required is that they all those parade participants have to be checked in at parade staging Again, we'll start that at 6.30, and they need to be in there and checked in no later than 7.15. At 7.15, we're moving everybody out of parade staging into position so that we can start opening ceremonies right at 7.30, and they're in position to because they're right at the very beginning of it. If someone is not in by that uh, 7.15, they're not in the parade. We're not going to be rushing them. Um, you know, they show up at 725. We are not going to be rushing them uh, to get up there. 715 is your cutoff. Uh, those of you who have been to Winter Games and to Fall Sports Festival know we adhere to that. Um, so uh, that even means if no one from your area checks in, then uh, we'll acknowledge your county as competing at Summer Games from the stage, but uh, they won't be in the parade. Um, please don't put us in the position of having to do that. Uh, being completely open, honest here and telling you that's going to happen. So make sure you get them in early. There's seats there uh, in the parade staging area and uh, it's air conditioned um, so they can come in, take a load off and such. Um, again, uh, and also as was noted in the email I sent out last week uh, or the week before, I forget which, um, no substitutions will be permitted after for participants. Um, uh, we have two exceptional athletes who will be doing being MCs uh, for the opening ceremony. Um, we are going to have them announce the names. That's the intent right now is to announce the names and going in, uh, particularly given some names, um, and swapping them out because the athletes will be rehearsing this. Uh, swapping them out at the last minute just leads to confusion uh, and problems there. It's, it's not an issue to scratch somebody from the list, but adding in and, uh, and so on, we're just not going to do it. So please don't test the system you won't be pleased. Um, but thank you again to everybody in advance for uh, accommodating and, and being supportive of that. Uh, I should also note within that list there, um, I know that uh, there are, I think there are two special situations already uh, that we know of. Um, if there is some special situation for one of the people in the parade, uh, and I would include in that if the individual uses a wheelchair, uh, because we'll, we'll need to accommodate the seating uh, where we have the parade uh, folks uh, after they finish their, their marching in the parade. Um, so anything along those lines, um, you know, special seating or any other special accommodation, please let us know. Uh, Steve, next. Um, for those who are not in the parade, there will be a special designated seating location uh, in, the, um, in the stands. Uh, and we do strongly encourage um, this isn't one of those things, hold your applause till the end. When your team comes in and they're announced, cheer your heads off. <laughs> Make as much noise as you can. Um, uh, it, it's uh, it, great to have that enthusiasm there. Um, but the only people who will be seated in those spaces will be actual delegation members. Non-delegation members, such as families or spectators or whatever, they're separate seating spaces, similar to how we've had it when we had everybody in the parade. They didn't sit with you. They're not going to sit with you now. The plan is to have the doors open no later than 645 for delegation members not in the parade. That may change. Uh, we're working with Towson to confirm how quickly they can get people uh, through security. Again, there will be security. They will be wanding everybody and checking all bags. You can really help with that by not bringing any bags in. Um, but uh, want to be sure that we can get folks through. Also, to assist with that, um, uh, can I put that there? Yeah, the, the intent is to call delegations 
at specific times to try to avoid crowding there. I can't tell you right now what that uh, order will be. We'll be looking at how many people, because we'll probably call, I don't know, Carroll County and Baltimore County together if their numbers are comparable, say, to Montgomery County or comparable to Howard County in terms of the number of people to get in. Uh, so we'll, it's a little bit of a puzzle, not as complex as the puzzle Jane does with housing, but it's still a bit of a puzzle. Uh, and also um, trying not to have the same, uh, everybody going to the same portion of the seating at the same time. So uh, we'll give you that, uh, that information. Hopefully we'll have that all mapped out for you on uh, Thursday. We may open the doors earlier. We will have um, picture showing uh, and music playing and such to, um, uh, for folks if they come in early. Uh, and uh, and are seated, so you're not just sitting there in dead silence, uh, but we will have that. Also a change, this is small, but just so folks are aware of it, uh, we will have the printed programs. We are not gonna put them out on the seats. Well, part of the reason, probably the main reason why we put them out on the seats in the past was all the athletes were marching in in the parade, and that was one more thing. Um, if we handed it to them as they came in the door or had them there to pick up, that's one more thing for them to carry going through the parade. Since people are coming in and just going right to their seats, uh, we're going to have the uh, programs available on tables, uh, or if we have sufficient number of volunteers, we may have them handing them out physically um, inside the doorway. Uh, we'll position it in such a way that it's, uh, um, it's not going to block or obstruct uh, the flow or slow anything down, uh, but we'll have them there. We'll also have them available at the, hospita the family hospitality areas uh, and volunteer check-in um and uh, and other locations so they still will be there they're just not going to be out on the seats those of you who maybe are at the end have been in the arena at the end we have to go through and pick up a ton of them because not all of them are taken um, and it just saves time along the way uh george if you're still on the phone do you want to talk about the uh, uh transportation here at the end of ceremony and looks like george has dropped off so i'll talk about it um so another change and to the extent that we can, if we know that your delegation is not staying overnight, we're going to position you um, so that you can do this. But we're going to start off with anybody who's not going on the buses to go back to the dorms. We're going to have you go out first and go out from the second level of the arena. Um, the, uh, if it, uh, the, uh, that's the level where the torch, if you've been there before, the torch is running around at that level. It's just up the stairs. And you'll go out the doorway at that second level, which is actually closer to where most people are going to be parking. If you're parking in lot 21 by the Towson Center, over 13, 14, or even down in 19, it's quicker and closer there. And it takes that number of people away from the main doorways uh, where, um, where the folks going to the buses are going. So that'll be first. You'll get out of there. Please advise your folks if they're, um, if they're not staying uh, on the campus to go that way. Uh, we'll then call by groups uh, to the shuttle buses, roughly 500 or so per wave. We'll have more details on that uh, at the HOD meeting um, and, uh, and such there. We will have music playing uh, and some other um, mild entertainment, if you will, um, uh, going on in the ceremony area uh, while, this is, while the, this is going on. So those who are later in the, the waves are, uh, um, uh, aren't sitting there bored. Um, so we need to know by June 4th from each delegation, the total number of delegation members you expect at opening ceremonies, not including those who are in the parade. And please be as accurate as possible. I realize there's gonna be a bit of guesswork, but that's the information we're gonna to use to, um, uh, to assign seating. Um, also the number of folks who use wheelchairs um, or have really significant mobility challenges. Um, you know, if, uh, if they use a walker, but they can handle a stair uh, or, you know, with given time because they'll have ample time to get there uh, or whatever. Uh, the bottom line is we can't put everybody on the floor. Uh, there's just not enough room. Uh, so um, those who maybe have those those challenges, there will be a designated seating area um, uh, near the uh, the front of the uh, of, of the uh, the seating and um, we'll designate it for that. Uh, but anyhow, send that information to me. We'll send a reminder, but we need that by June 4th so we can put the stuff together and have information for you by um, the, uh, uh, the HOD meeting. If you don't give us that information, we're not going to be, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a reminder, but we're, you know, we're, you're, you're adults. We're not going to hound you. 
but if we don't have it, uh, it's a crapshoot where you're going to sit, and it's quite possible that you may not be have all your delegations sitting together. Um, so uh, it behooves you to give us that information. Uh, we also need to know uh, by June 4th any information, any facts, whatever that you want incorporated into the opening ceremony script. Please be brief. We're not looking for a paragraph. When you had a, a large delegation of, of uh, athletes and such coming in, you know, and it might be two minutes or so uh, or more, three minutes, four minutes, hell, someone 10 minutes uh, to fill. Uh, that was one thing here. We expect each delegation to walk past the uh, the front in about a minute, maybe a minute and a half at most. Um, so be brief, uh, and but send them on to Kira. And again, you're going to be treated like adults. We're not going to keep hounding you. If you don't give us anything, you won't have anything. Uh, Steve, next. I'm not sure if that's the end of ceremonies. It is. So unless there's any questions related to ceremonies. Uh, I know we had one or two, but uh, Zach's been addressing those. So. Um, I'll, I want to be uh, mindful of everyone's time, so I'll go through uh, some of this information pretty quickly. So we will have a healthy athlete, so there'll be two or three stations located through the summer games. Uh, we'll give you the exact uh, details on that um, at the HOD meeting on the 6th. Uh, Olympic Park, we've talked about all that. Um, again, the Kings of Queens, and there's your best royal outfit or medieval outfit. So family services, we talked about those locations. Again, uh, those locations will also have merchandise. Um, so uh, it's a great place for families to go interact with each other, check out uh, the merchandise, and um, uh, again, just, just uh, meet new people and continue the, uh, the conversations. Meals, uh, we've talked about that again for dinner. Um, the, the meals for breakfast and dinners, will be the use of the swipe card. So those will be for individuals who are staying overnight. Uh, everyone will be served lunches based on the orders that were submitted through either yourselves as the HODs, uh, working with your coaches or your coaches. I appreciate everyone getting that information in. And um, again, depending on what version you have of the event guide, if you, we'll give each one of you at least one copy of the event guide on site. Um, in that one, it does still have uh, lot 20 as the dinner for Saturday night. So again, I just stress, 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 dinner on Saturday night will be in Susquehanna and the University Union. Control Center, same place, uh, Minigan Room. Um, and um, Jane, if you are on the line now, um, we're going to unmute you. And if you want to talk briefly about some housing reminders and the process and thank everyone for submitting their stuff and thank you for working with everyone and fitting that puzzle together. Okay, so again, I'm going to reiterate uh, Steve's thanks. It was a little challenging this year, especially since we didn't use any of the Glen Towers, and I appreciate everybody um, working with me. I, I do have currently everything into the GMS, um, and um, everything has been entered into the database at Towson. Um, I know some of you had some, you were going to be moving a few things around. I'm going to really need that information by tomorrow. I know Adam at the university is very busy with graduations, but um, they're going to be getting really geared up to get everything finalized. So I would like to get any last minute moves or, or changes in your housing needs um, by tomorrow. And um, I also want to thank everybody for working so hard on making sure that all the keys get turned in on Sunday. And I'll just be mentioning a little bit more about the key turn in at the HOD meeting next Thursday. But I think we're doing really well. I, I don't know if we're, were there any outstanding keys last year. I can't remember. Anyway, everybody's doing a great job. Great. Thank you so much, Jane. And again, thanks everyone for working together. We know that that is a uh, tough process, starting with the allocations of beds, requests for beds, getting everybody assigned, et cetera. So we appreciate everyone's work. Um, a lot of lot of hands in the in the puzzle on that on that piece. So the event guide has been distributed to everyone that we have a valid email address um, within GMS. So that's head, head heads of delegation, coaches, head coaches, volunteers, athletes, et cetera. So um, everyone should have that. And again, that is on the coaches resource page on our website. Like I said, the shirts, um, they are, actually have already arrived at Towson University. Uh, one of our new liaisons at Towson is gracious enough to have been storing those in his own office. 
as you guys all well know, how many boxes that is. So um, again, just work out amongst your team, yourselves, how you're going to take those shirts and get them distributed to your um, uh, other delegation members. Medical, we always stress that. Um, obviously, we expressively um, did that with uh, bocce this year because it is on turf. And if you've uh, been around turf in the summertime, know that the turf can be um, up to 20 degrees or a little bit warmer uh, than what is typically out on the parking lots or grass areas. So hydrate, 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 um, and uh, sunscreen. We will not provide sunscreen. That's up to you guys to take care of. Um, but again, just remind everybody to, uh, to drink their liquids and water throughout the days and stay hydrated. Talked about the, uh, the weather issue. Uh, basically, all I really want to say on this is we will make the call in conjunction with Towson University staff. Uh, we'll be monitoring that um, all week leading up to the summer games and each day and each hour during summer games. We will make the official decision. We will notify everyone through the means of our venue directors at each given venue. And um, I know rumors will start flying as everyone watches the weather and starts asking questions. Just know, um, as I know you guys do, that, that we're very mindful of that and um, we have our evacuation plans in place and uh, we just want to follow that direction. Um, the, the one thing I do want to mention is if there are delegation tents either in the stadium or at Bocce or wherever you may be setting up, if there is a call that we need those tents to be taken down, uh, in the past we have had issues with family members saying, well, I'm just going to leave mine up and, and giving us a little bit of an attitude. Um, it's not just because of willy-nilly decisions, um, because high winds will be coming in, and that tent then becomes a, 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 a very dangerous object in the air, damaging other people, other equipment, other property, Towson University property, cars, etc. So um, just have your family members work with us and, and make all that uh, go smoothly. Codes of conduct, I know you're all aware of that. Uh, the full descriptions of all of the codes of conduct is in the event guide. Um, so we just want to uh, let you know that that's there if you need to refer to that with family members, athletes, coaches, whatever. Um, basically, you guys know it. Um, be respectful to all. Uh, take care of the athletes, partners, but respect the officials, all volunteers, staff, management, other volunteers within your delegation, um, Towson University staff, um, everyone involved. Here are um, all of our hashtags and social media information points. Um, so, as you know, the more exposure we can get out, the more people know about Special Olympics, and you can share your pictures from summer games and the highlights and accomplishments, show everyone how great of a time it is. Um, they can come out and join you, but again, we just want to share that so everyone has that information. And also, obviously, we want to thank all of our sponsors. Without them, the funds are not possible to do what we do year-round for all the athletes, partners, uh, coaches, etc. cetera. So, um, here again, our, uh, the last slide here basically is resources. So for um, athletics, you can contact Ron Freeman, Bocce, Kara, Zach with swimming, Melissa with cheerleading and softball, myself, Steve Bennett with any general questions. And again, um, at, the, at the top of the slide here is the resources page for coaches. And again, that's open to the public. Anybody can view any of the information there. There's no password or code needed. Uh, so the more people we can direct there, and get familiar with that site. Um, we just wanna make that uh, very user-friendly for everybody. Um, so as we look right now with any additional questions, um, we just wanna thank you guys as leaders of your area and county programs. Uh, as we do, we thanked all the coaches without you guys in the positions and doing what you guys do year round, leading up to the summer games throughout the season and what you will be going through um, as a leader and uh, for the summer games for your County programs. We can't thank you enough uh, for servicing the athletes and partners and doing what you do for Special Olympics Maryland and your given area and county program. So working together, we will have the best summer games we can possibly have and, and have a great venue to show um, our athletes and partners skill levels and uh, showcase those to the community and throughout the, 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 the United States and the world when you use all your social media points. So again, I know we ran a little over. I appreciate your patience. Thank you, George, Jane, and Mike, and Zach for helping out with the webinar tonight. And again, I don't see any more questions at this time. So either it was really informative or um, we put
put you to sleep. Um, so again, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening and look forward to seeing you at Summer Games. Thanks.